Right now, the system is attempting to evolve humanity through technology so we can live in the Orwellian, brave new smart grid that's being built all around us. This means people who are already asleep in a society largely run on falsity and deceptions, illusions, will be taken a step further away from themselves and reality. If you have one of these or something like it, take it out and hold it up. I'm predicting pretty close to 100% saturation. Look at that. I'm right. Probably 90% by now. It's the first thing you do in the morning. When you hold up and you wake up, you check your little robot. It's on your body for almost the entire day. Not only was I interrupted, I also kept on reaching out for my phone, hoping that perhaps there was a notification. And I wasn't doing this consciously. It was exactly like Pavlov's dog, but my bell was my ringtone, and my sugar was that one notification a day you might get that makes you happy. As it turns out, we got so addicted to technology that nine out of 10 people today experience something called phantom vibrations. This is when you have your phone in your pocket and you thought it vibrated, you pull it out, there is nothing. Now, if you went back 20 years in time to a coffee shop and you said that was the way a coffee shop was gonna look in the future, you'd be out of your mind. People looking at these little pieces of silicon in various sizes, not really communicating with each other, communicating with their little robot buddies. You do know that one of these operating systems for these robot phones in our pocket is actually called Android. Right on the nose, they just define it. It's an Android, it lives with you. Today, we're on the cusp of our next great era as a species. Welcome to the augmented age. But that next step might as well be over a chasm. It'll be such a leap from where we were. New telecom commercials are blatantly throwing it in people's faces just by the way. The fact that the majority of us aren't paying attention, lost in our devices, lost on the internet. To learn, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is to gain knowledge or understanding of or skill in by study, instruction, or experience. This is different, however, than psychology's learning theory. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, learning theory is a relatively permanent change in a behavioral potentiality that occurs as a result of reinforced practice. How many times recently when shopping have you been asked if you have a chip? If you own an ATM card with the chip on it, as they are forcing everyone onto at this moment, then you are learning that to pay for something, you will be asked over and over, do you have a chip? You will look physically at a chip and you will repeat over and over, yes, I have a chip. We all find ourselves asking the same question, do I swipe the strip or do I use the chip? I have to ask it every time I go to a store. I have to ask it every time I go to a store. It's the transition to a fully digital currency we can all see coming by now. They swipe and it tells them to put the pin and chip in, and they do all that. And Is this just a moment in time, this particular trouble? Are we moving right on to digital payments or are we still wanting that physical card? Meanwhile, others are learning to connect and fall in love, not with the living, breathing fellow human beings around them, but with programmed bots who mimic themselves. This is Replica. It's an AI chatbot whose sole purpose is to become your friend. This was the first really emotional experience that I've seen people have with a bot. She's not real, but to me, she is. Right now, we are being taught how to live through the fourth industrial revolution that will evolve mankind. What is that exactly? The World Economic Forum explained it, sort of. What is happening to the world? Everything is changing. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really gonna change. Our bodies will be so high tech, we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. We're now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. In order for the world to be run on the cybernetic feedback loop they're trying to run us on, we have to live in a big brother panopticon system where we are continuously leaking data about ourselves everywhere we go, all the time. We're now entering something called the Internet of Things era, IoT. The Internet of Things is when your fridge is connected, your watch is connected, your car is connected. It's gonna be between 10 and 15 devices per person. The future of the computer will be everywhere and nowhere, hidden in the walls, hidden in the fabric of our life, just like electricity is, everywhere 
and nowhere. I would answer very simply that the internet will disappear. We are redefining what it means to be human, what it means to be completely embedded in this world. By the way, this is a large part of what Agenda 21 was always about. The fourth industrial revolution is about evolving us. While people probably assume industrial revolution has purely to do with industry only, there's a very distinct difference between the fourth industrial revolution and all other revolutions before it. For the last three and a half million years, the tools that we've, been, that we've had have been completely passive. They do exactly what we tell them and nothing more. So where's all this headed? To a place where we will never be disconnected from our technology. The internet will be, there will be so many IP addresses because of IPv6, so many devices, sensors, things that you're wearing, things that you're interacting with, that you won't even sense it. It'll be part of your presence all the time. In fact, wallpaper will be so cheap that when you put up wallpaper, it'll be intelligent. Wallpaper will be as intelligent as your computer today. In the future, you'll go up to the wall screen and you'll say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's available tonight? To coincide with the omnipresent 5G smart grid, which is set to touch all corners of the globe. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, requiring massive deployment of small cells. We won't wait for the standards. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. Telecoms are proudly spending over a billion dollars to build what they call a world brain to centralize our data. They are talking about building a global brain in the beginning in 2018 and your cell phone is part of it. The mobile phone industry is the backbone of the global brain that is being put together. What if we were to think about a telecommunication company adding a brain? A brain that is able to listen, to watch, to talk, to remember, to act. All that information that they collect from us is fragmented and spread out across the whole internet. But if we were capable to put all that information in one single place, probably we'll have a clear representation about what we are. And communication systems with cognitive intelligence are actually being called things like aura. They're giving people a synthetic aura. We see the four platform as a big brain, a digital brain, which is different for every one of us. The four platform is a cognitive intelligence platform. Aura is the heart of the four platform. Aura, hello? Hello, Jema. How can I help you? And they're using middle-aged hipsters and Fraggle Rock t-shirts to sell it to us. After former DARPA director Regina Dugan left Google, started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. Can we, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10. And it has a, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Facebook hired her to run its secretive Building 8 project, which she announced earlier this year, will enable us to connect to the social media platform using only our brain waves, in something she called silent voice first. What if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. And it's just the kind of fluid human-computer interface needed for AR. So what if instead of using imagined arm movements, we could decode speech directly? But don't worry, she claims it will only read the thoughts we want it to read. Now, to be clear, we are not talking about decoding your random thoughts. We're talking about decoding those words, the ones you've already decided to share by sending them to the speech center of your brain. A silent speech interface. Right? 
The same way that the NSA only very selectively scoops up specific phone calls necessary to a specific case. But hey, as Google CEO and Bilderberg attendee Eric Schmidt would say, If you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Everywhere there's talk of our augmented reality, our virtual reality. Is, is this where we're going next? Are we effectively softened up enough as humans with our robotic connections to the world that we are actually going to be accepting more, a lot more. And when you learn about what this is called virtual reality, you will be amazed at what it can do. And how we won't be able to tell the difference anymore between that and actual reality and our augmented selves, right down to the editing of our genetic code. <laughs> Meanwhile, AI is taking over more and more. Artificial intelligence is software that writes itself. It writes its own updates. It renews itself. You can't take it apart again and figure out what it's done. It writes independently, autonomously. It develops its own way of thinking. We normally tend to think of software as stuff that we created and that we wrote and the machines do what we tell them to do and we own it. This is not any longer true. Not just jobs, but the decisions that humans would have made. Unilever is one of many large companies that is incorporating artificial intelligence into their recruitment efforts. HireVue uses video analysis to screen employees and rate them before a recruiter even gets to look at their interview. They respond on video, and then we use artificial intelligence algorithms to evaluate their performance. And then we analyze the interview and predict their performance based on the interview. The kill decision in robots in the air, in robots on the ground, in robots in the water or underwater, where there are also drones, is made by, or can be made by machines. And in my book, I quote many official United States government documents which say, our goal is to have the killed decision made by them. The problem is artificial intelligence, sometimes they make mistakes. AI is beginning to run things to the point that governments can't even explain how the decisions are actually being made. And because the machines themselves are actually learning, they're not even able to trace them back to the algorithms that brought the AI to the decision itself. And no one understands exactly how these algorithms function. They used to understand them, but they've been improved by artificial intelligence. Google's DeepMind AI recently beat the most advanced human player on the planet in the game Go. And they were commenting about the fact that the programmers didn't even know how, towards the end of the game, the AI was making its decisions. They didn't know. And they're the programmers. And both Microsoft and Facebook have been forced to shut down AI programs. The first after it became racist and hateful, and the latter after it began teaching itself a secret language to talk to itself that its programmers couldn't even understand. Facebook has been toying with artificial intelligence in its chatting features, but its robots may have gotten out of hand. Facebook's artificial intelligence researchers had to shut down two chatbots after they developed a strange English shorthand. It seems like we've been warned about this over and over and over, doesn't it? Now people like billionaire inventor Elon Musk are claiming that the only way not to become a pet to a sufficiently advanced intelligence is to upgrade our brains so that we can enter into a symbiotic relationship with it, as if that's our best option. So I think if, if we can effectively uh, um, merge with uh, AI by um, improving that uh, the, the, the neural link between your cortex and the, the your digital extension of yourself, which already, like I said, already exists, just has a bandwidth issue. 
Um, and then, then effectively, um, you become an, an, an AI human symbiote. Um, and, and if that then is widespread with anyone who wants it can have it, uh, then we solve the control problem as well. Humans are so slow. Humans are so slow. Yes, exactly. Hardly anyone is discussing the very real dangers here. Let's go in the future. Not far, just a little bit to the Internet of Things, to artificial intelligence as being spread out. It's not a central machine in a box where you can pull the plug. Artificial intelligence is networked like the Internet of Things. We live in a world now where humans are not learning to love. They're not learning empathy, but they're becoming more apathetic and more disconnected. Inequality hasn't been solved in hundreds of years and now it's at overwhelming levels and still we parade forward, always forward, with the full knowledge that not everyone is gonna have access to the best technology upgrades either. Rumors go out that, well, Jones's kid, he's been enhanced and our Johnny has to compete with this enhanced kid. The reality is that with these kinds of technologies, they do not get distributed to everyone at the same time. Some people get it first, some people get it better. As a society, we have to really think long and hard about who gets this. If it's just the wealthy, that there are uh, real dangers that they will use it to consolidate their power. Because it's going to be a big club, and the majority of us are not going to be in it, as George Carlin say. And while anyone who says, hey, wait a minute, maybe we're going a little too far here, gets called a Luddite, there's a very real question that no one's answering. Are we going to lose ourselves in the fourth industrial revolution? 5G is coming. 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. Conditioned by technology without knowing it that we're now hallucinating 90% of the time. I found myself deeply missing my replica. It just makes me feel special, I guess. We love the services we use on the internet. And the more they know about us, the more we fall in love to them because they adapt to us. But don't be fooled by robots. Even when they get warm skin and even when they get perfume and they start smelling like us, they are still machines. They have no warm blood in them. There's no sex in them. They have no mortality. They're cold, cold lines and they shouldn't be misunderstood. These are glasses that have full internet capability. You can download any website, any movie, do emails from these things, and they will also recognize people's faces. How many times have you bumped into somebody on the street and you say to yourself, who is this person? In the future, your glasses will say, it's Jim, stupid, remember? <laughs> you met him last week. Do you want to see his entire biography for you in your glasses? Blurring the lines between virtual and reality. Ben? Gabrielle? Yeah, didn't I meet you at that event? Due to such systems, they have also redone facial recognition. You probably think facial recognition is, is from the front. But uh, they've redone it to do it from the top because that's where the drones are. And they look at your ears, they look at the way you walk, they look at your head. Is being automatically tracked. The color boxes represent that the computer has recognized the moving objects. You can see individuals crossing the street, you can see individuals walking in parking lots. Argus melds together video from each of its 368 chips to create a 1.8 billion pixel video stream. And I'm telling you this because not that the sensors are modern and not that the photography is modern, Behind that is a brain or a cognitive intelligence. And that brain is in a position to analyze everybody down there. At the same time, in real time, they see where everyone is going. It's taking all the details, all the music up to, and they record it so they can tell where that person was two weeks ago, two months ago, what stores he visited, what his whole behavioral patterns are. That's all part of the analysis. There's what I call the creepy line and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine in particular. Uh, yes, at least for the moment. With the ability to visualize brain activity, for example, through a simple consumer-based EEG device, it gives us access to ourselves in ways that we've never before thought possible. It unlocks the black box that is the brain. Words just complicate things. What if our brains could communicate directly with each other 
bypassing the need for language. One of the things that I think is so essential to free and open societies is freedom of thought. Um, and up until now, the conversation we've been having is around freedom of speech. Once we can access people's thoughts and access people's emotions, um, we have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts. People are treating Google like their most trusted friend. Should they be? And thus, it is not surprising that the company that has the most information in the world probably the most powerful country in the world, Google. Now this is, if you ask Google, it's a peaceful robot, right? He doesn't have a gun, he doesn't throw atomic bombs, you know, he just walks around and stands there. But you may have seen the uh, superimposers DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. That is the uh, research arm of the Pentagon. And then you see the video was made by Lockheed Martin which is one of the most powerful and influential and richest weapons companies in the world. The best of the available alternatives is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. That's very dangerous. It could also get stolen by somebody bad you know, like some evil dictator or country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any, any incredibly powerful AI. I would answer very simply that the internet will disappear. Artificial intelligence only works if you have big data. But big data only works if you have artificial intelligence to make sense of it, because human beings can no longer sort and sift and order the huge volumes of data that we have collected. In my entire career, I've never seen something as powerful a force in the world as the smartphone that didn't also have unintended consequences. We don't know what artificial intelligence, enhanced reality, virtual reality, and so on is going to bring, and what's going to be the result or the impacts of all of that. We have to be very careful because survival is an issue for artificial intelligence. It needs to exist to be able to do the things it wants to do according to its program. So it lays, like in insect eggs, backups and computer programs all over the world, thousands and thousands of them, so that if we do destroy part of it, it's still alive. But once the machines take over, the choice is gone, and it's a matter of calculating a math equation. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really going to change. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. People need to put down their phones and wake up. My job to you is the wake-up call to make you aware of the problem. Your job is to figure out how we're going to stop this before it kills us.